You know the vibes! Welcome back to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast brought to you by NBA 2K25. It's myself, Mo Moussi, alongside me as always, three-time NBA champion, Mr. BJ Armstrong. Opening night of the NBA season came and went in a flash. BJ, how are you feeling? We're going to break down the opening night's action from around the NBA. Great first night. Your Boston Celtics, the Seas. They looked incredible. You know, Mo, I told you, I just wanted to see, okay, they, they can turn off the distractions. Well, how about for 48 minutes? Hell they, yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have a chip on their shoulder. Their two best players are incredibly focused. The confidence is sky high. And you can see the depth that they have in, in this team. I mean, these guys, Cornette. These guys that are coming off the bench, they're playing with a, an unusual amount of confidence. And you could see now that they are a machine right now. And Jason Tatum is a notorious slow starter. Yep. Well, he don't usually get going until like February. He came out last night, 37 yeah. points, 10 assists, 8 of 11 from 3, 14 of 18 from the field, Four rebounds, a steal, and a block. Plus 26 in his minutes. And, you know, there was no fourth quarter. So that was a... No, that PJ, was a, PJ, there was no second or third quarter. Like, like, after that first quarter, the game was done. So what's crazy what about it is it's, Brunson and McBride started the game 11 for 11, 29 points. So, so your guards have not missed a shot. And if that happens to any team in the league, you're going to be up big by the end of the first quarter, by the end of half time. They were down like 19 points because the Celtics started the game. I think the Celtics had made more threes than the Knicks had taken shots. And what I love about it is it's not that the Celtics were coming down and just chucking the first three. You saw so many times they were making the extra pass, making the right play. And a lot of it started with their defense and getting out and running in transition. But I want to start at the very beginning of the game. I'm doing a video that's going to be on YouTube, like a breakdown video. But the first four possessions of that game, do you know what stood out to me? I watched it. So why don't you share with us? They went at Carl Anthony Towns every time down the floor. They tried to start Carl Anthony Towns in a deep drop. The first player of the game, Jason Tatum, wide open three. Now he's already got his rhythm off of that alone. Then he's just, Carl Anthony Towns is trying to sit back in the paint. And the Celtics are just knocking out three after three after three. And then when he does step up and try and hedge the screens later in the game, they just make the extra pass out of it because someone's going to be open. And then when he is sitting in the paint as well, and the, the defenders are playing high, Tatum's just putting his head down and going to the hoop because he knows that cat ain't protecting the bucket. So all this talk about, you know, it's not going to be a big drop off from Hartenstein to Kyle Anthony You saw already in game one, the liability that Carl Anthony Towns is on defense. Now he might improve. Tibbs might have something up his sleeve to help Towns improve, but the Knicks really need Mitchell Robinson back. And then on the other side of the ball, the Celtics were happy to guard Cat with Jalen Brown or Drew Holiday and Cat being seven foot tall. BJ, you remember that video I put on TikTok a couple of weeks ago? He went backing them down into the paint and drop stepping them to death. He was settling for fadeaways or he was shooting from the three point line. Not a great game for Cat, but the biggest weakness for the Knicks on offense, aside from Mikael Bridges, who couldn't hit a shot for the first three quarters and almost looked at one point as if he was going to turn into Ben Simmons because he didn't want to shoot some, but in the third quarter, he got it going, um, was Josh Hart because the Celtics guarded Josh Hart with Al Horford, which doesn't make sense traditionally, but the Celtics just considered Josh Hart that little of a threat on offense that it allowed Al or whichever big was on the court to guard him and play that roaming role on the defensive side of the basketball, which then allowed Al or whoever to protect the paint. So that's that's what I saw. What about you? Well, there, there are three players that really stand out to me. And you know, Mo, I I I, I watch the game. I don't I, I don't do the the traditional thing that you do in the media, the hot takes and all of the the things that will garnish clicks. DiVincenzo, why would why do they miss DiVincenzo? Because DiVincenzo always guarded the other team's best perimeter player. Well, you, you have OG who can do that now. 
Okay. And that's why they went for Bridges. I, I, I didn't say I didn't say best wing player. Best perimeter okay. player. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, there's a difference here. Okay. Let's get the terminology correct. OG guarded well, he was attempting to guard Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, but that 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 wasn't the case last night. The point of attack is always your lead guard, or you need a guard who can defend against dribble penetration. Okay, we call that Mo in in the NBA game and in, in, in the game of basketball, playing downhill. Right? We're we're all familiar with that term. The guy who can play with a full steam ahead, attack, get into the paint, and start what they say, spray the ball. All right. That's why you you, you get to the get to the corner threes, like you saw Boston getting last night. You open the court up, you drive, you kick, and you play and you and you play that way. Now, last night, it was a floodgate. <laughs> okay. All right. They targeted two players, Jalen Brunson and Carl Anthony Towns. Now, DiVincenzo does an exceptional job. Or he, he, you know, I watched him play last night. He did it. He did a terrific job last night. That's that's one thing that he does exceptionally well. He can defend against the perimeter players. Second, you have another role player, Hardenstein. He is what we consider a ground athlete. He could switch. He hedges. He makes all of the hustle plays. He does all of the things that allow you to play on the defensive end in a certain manner. Not that Carl Anthony Towns can't do it. However, Carl Anthony Towns is a scorer by nature. That's his, that's his natural instinct. Third, Mitchell Robinson. When you have an elite shot blocker, a la Rudy Gobert, I know Rudy Gobert catch a lot, he catches a lot of flack from you, and I know you're joking here, defensive player. It's all love, here. Rudy. It's all love. Yes, yes. But Rudy Gobert, I would play with Rudy Gobert anytime. Why? Because he allows the defense to make mistakes and mm. he covers for those mistakes. And when you have a shot blocker, it shrinks the court because now your perimeter players can play defense from behind so that guys can't fade away and do all those things. And you just keep chasing him. We call that a funnel defense. So they've lost three key components. They've lost the point of attack with DiVincenzo. They've lost the rim protector with Mitchell Robertson, and then they've lost a guy who plays with the, the game with a certain level of physicality. Now, they've brought in Mikhail Bridges. They've brought in other players. However, what you're seeing now is they have to find their identity because this is a different team. Every year is different. Just because you have the same name as the previous year, the team and the players are different. Therefore, your team is different. This team is going to have to figure out how to defend. They're going to have to figure out how to defend because teams are going to attack Jalen Brunson. They're going to do that. You saw they're going to attack Carl Anthony Towns. Why? Because after Carl Anthony Towns, they're actually a small team. So, Kat, are you going to be a rim protector or are you going to be a guy that switches or are you going to be a guy that plays with a certain level of physicality? Your choice. You got to do something. <laughs> you got to do something. You got to pick at least now, one. Now, we know, you know, you and I said it in September when the trade was made. We said this. Whenever the trade was made, you and I said, yeah, I like it on the offensive end. However, we're going to have to figure out defensively because you don't – when you start losing elite defensive players, then it's very hard for you to have team chemistry because you can't play with the consistency necessary to be a good team. I think your Celtics last night scored over 70 points versus a tips team. I don't know if you saw the steam. It wasn't because of the, 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 the Celtics PR had a new scheme. That was steam coming out of tips ears yep. because he was so upset. Every time the camera 70... cut to him, it looked like he was going to lose his mind because you can't win that way. It took I don't him care two minutes to call score. up his first time out. And he was, yes. Losing. So we know that the game is played the way it's played now, right? Pace, space, you know, and your Celtics, they do it as well as, as anybody now, the way they play. I mean, it just literally, they got five guys out there yeah. trying to shoot a three. And Tibbs now knows that, oh, man, we got to we gotta figure out how to stop somebody. They can score, and then, but you got to stop someone, and they're going to have, right now, that was 
glaring to me because if it's one thing about a tips team that you always know or you can count on is they're going to defend mm -hmm. now they can't defend and it's like mm -hmm. what is happening here so but we'll see just one well, game maybe what's, it's what's crazy is the Celtics made 29 threes which tied the nba record set by the bucks and they had eight minutes left in the game to break that record they proceeded to miss 13 straight three-pointers they weren't even running an offense they were just chucking threes to try and break that record and they were still up 23 points after missing 13 straight three pointers. It's ridiculous. Yeah. No, it's they they played. I'm telling you, J Jason Tatum looks like a man on a mission. That new he, jump he, shot, the smoother, yeah, he, it's cleaner. Yeah. He's getting it off the dribble, he's getting it off the catch. He's doing it with a defender in his face. Jalen Brown looks like he has a he always plays with a chip on his shoulder. So when your two best players are playing at this elite level on both ends. And you know what I love about Jalen Brown? I love Jason Tatum as well. Jalen Brown takes on the responsibility. They have all defensive guards and Jalen Brown still takes his turn on guarding Jalen Brown. Mm -hmm. That to me is just like, that's just a mentality within the team. You got that, every player you know, on the Soics can play defense. Every player yes. on the Soics can shoot the basketball. So there's no one that you need to hide on defense and there's no one that you need to hide on offense. When you look at the Knicks, they have to hide Carl Anthony Towns and Jalen Brunson on defense and they have to hide Josh Hart on offense. That's just the difference between the two teams. That's, that, yeah, that's it. it, it it's, you're, and Mikael Bridges, they've got to hide if he can't figure out his jump shot. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. It, it's going to be tough. I think it's going to take the Knicks a little time. Good players, but... Right now, the Celtics, I, I, I think they are the cream of the Eastern Conference and of the, in the league. They look like the best team right now. They, they, they really, really showed why they were the defending champions. And um, it's going to be tough. Yeah. It's going to be they, tough. Celtics knocked down 29 three-pointers. They were 48 of 95 from the field, 33 assists, uh, 11 offensive rebounds compared to only five from the Knicks. So do a great job of crashing from the wings to get those offensive rebounds and generate more looks when the defense isn't set up and ready to guard even more wide open threes. But the other game that happened last night, um, I was I was two for two. So X and Lakers both got the win. Um, yeah, you did. You called that yesterday. You the, the, called that. Let's keep a tally throughout the whole season. We'll, we'll do every game <laughs> throughout the whole season and we'll see it. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves lost to the LA Lakers, 110 to 103. And the uh, storyline of the night, was Bronny James making his debut with his father, LeBron. Uh, Bronny came in for uh, two minutes, 41 seconds, minus five. Uh, not really anything to shout home about, but there was one play. When uh, Bronny and LeBron were on the court together, there was one play where Bronny was in the corner. LeBron cuts baseline from the other corner. He has a wide open dunk, but he also has Bronny wide open in the corner. And I'm watching it, and I'm expecting LeBron, one of the best passes we've ever seen, to simply fire the ball to the corner and get his son a wide open three to start his NBA career. And instead he just dunked the basketball. And in my group chat, there's a lot of LeBron fans and they were like, no, but it was a great dunk. And I'm like, yeah, LeBron's never had a great dunk before. Why, why would he want to get his son a wide open three to start his career? So that was pretty interesting to me. Uh, tough ride for Bronny, but the Lakers got it out of the way so then they could focus on on the rest of the game. Andy Davis with a monster 36 and 16 performance. Um, Rui Hachimura really impressed me for the Lakers. He finished with 18 um, and defensively as well. I like the, the lineup that they started with. Gabe Vincent is now healthy, back playing for the Lakers. Jackson Hayes gave them good 15 minutes, gave them 10 points off the bench in 15 minutes. And Dalton Connect, um, he showed a couple flashes of why, you know, you you and Scott and, and myself have been so excited about him. But what do you see from the Timberwolves side of things in this one? Because it was it was kind of a mixed bag for Julius Randle on his debut for the Timberwolves in a regular season. Um, what, what were you saying? Because DiVincenzo, Nas Reed, and Nikhil Alexander-Walker off the bench of the trio is absolutely fantastic. But yeah, there were, I mean, there were listen, long stretches of that game where it looked tough for the Timberwolves. Normal, normally, when you get three guys that score double figures off your bench, that, that's a pretty good indicator that you have a chance to win this game. It's going to take some time to, to mesh this group together and figure out how they're going to play. And I think it's going to take a little time to incorporate Julius Randle's brand or style of basketball and how they're going to play and what the, what the combinations are. 
you know, I think Julius, you know, I know he scored in double figures last night, but he's only played in about two, I don't know, a couple games maybe. I don't even know if he played a couple games in the preseason. He's coming off of an injury from a year ago. And I think it's going to take some time for them to incorporate him and figure out the spacing and the combinations and how they're going to have to play with him. But I like this team. I like Minnesota. Give the Lakers credit. They play well at home. AD was he, – he, he had a monster game. I mean, AD controlled both sides of the ball. He was, the, you know, if not the best offensive player on the floor, he certainly was the best defensive player on the floor. And that says a lot because Rudy Gobert is playing as well. So AD was a monster. Lakers played well. Got great contributions. But I'm not concerned with Minnesota. Um, I, I like what they do. I like what they have. I like their personnel. But that was a great win for the Lakers. That really was a nice win for them. Kind of, kind of, you know, gives them a little confidence. And you have to give, uh, you know, J.J. Reddick credit. I, I thought they ran some pretty nice actions. They looked prepared on the defensive end. I like how they're playing. I like the, I like the pace in which they're playing at. Um, and I, I liked what I saw. And um, so I, I want to give the Lakers credit. It's a long season, but that was a good start for them. Um, J.J. Reddick said something after the game that I wanted to get your take on. He said, why are we playing with brand new basketballs and not basketballs that have been worn in? Um, for people who don't know, NBA players play with a basketball that's different to one that you could buy in the store. It's uh, a lot smoother, I would say. The leather. You think so? You think so? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't you buy those. So? You can't buy those at retail. Oh, wow. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. can. No, yeah. no, you can't. Yeah, you can. No, you can't. No, you can't. Go, go to a store. Go to whatever you have in America, Dick Sporting Goods or whatever it is, Champ Sports, and try buy one. You can't buy them. The NBA okay. ball is different to the ball that they sell to consumers. Okay. Um, but I can you just that. break down for the, uh, for the listeners the difference between a brand new basketball and one that's been worn in? Well, you, you know, the one thing, because the balls are used so much, I mean, you would go through a lot of basketballs through the course of the year. I, I always assume that because the balls are used so much, practic well, practically every day, right, that that's why the balls feel different, you know, because the sweat oils on your hand and the clanking of the rim, dribbling of the ball over time, you know, it's just you're using it so much. That, you know, that's why, you know, players, you know, you kind of get, there's like a texture that you want to feel. Now, for TV, you want to have new balls, right? Because the ball looks new, looks shiny, and you want to have that that basketball. You don't want some scuffed up ball, <laughs> which is going to be on the television for the entire game, um, you know, looking a certain way. So that that's where I always felt. Um, and so I, I... I prefer to play with scuffed up balls because it feels better. It's it's like sticky to your hands. Yep. But I understand and I learned how to play with new balls. And the, you know, with you know, the new basketballs and the and the way the ball is played. So I just learned, I just kind of adapt. You know, it's one of those things you adapt. And um but over time, over time, and one of the, the things that we always did in Chicago was, you know, we, we always wanted to play with the older balls. The, the, the captains would come out and they would say, which ball? And then, you know, they would give you a choice, but it really wasn't a choice, but they would give you a choice. So we just made a game ball so that by the end of the season, the ball would be worn down <laughs> to yep. where, you know, it would be, you know, kind of at the its right texture or the texture that felt most comfortable to most players. So that was one of the things we did. And um, when I see, when I whenever I, I would see, it's funny things. I don't know why I recall this, but whenever you go, whenever you would play with a team that didn't have, like, say, a good record and yet they had a new ball, you always kind of say, oh, now I know why. Because these are the details. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All, yeah. The, all the good teams kind of knew, you know, those are like little things. You know, not, they're not big things, but they're little things. So you like to play with the, the ball that actually, you know, has a little grip to it. Okay, well. Seeing as we're now doing a podcast on a different time schedule, uh, these shows come out uh, around 3 p.m. UK time. Uh, if you're listening to audio a little bit later on YouTube, because we obviously have to edit that video. Uh, but we can predict tonight's games. BJ, Pacers, Pistons. Pacers. Pacers, yep. Cavs, Raptors. Cavs. Yep, I hear it. Bucks, Sixers. 
Bucks. Yeah, no Embiid and no Paul George to start the season. So that's going to be tough. Um, Magic Heat. That's a tough one. I'm going to go Heat. Okay. I'm going to go with Magic. Okay. I think the young boys are going to be excited to get the season underway. I, I, I agree Come with that. I, I, I agree with that. Jalen Suggs, you know. Are you, are you changing your pick? No, I'm going to go with you, the heat. but okay. but I I I agree I agree with what you're saying there. I mean that's a that's a toss up. Nets Hawks. Where's that game played at? In Atlanta. Atlanta. I would pick Atlanta even if it's in Brooklyn. Uh, Bulls Pelicans. The Pels. Pelicans. Yep. Uh, Hornets Rockets. Not your Rockets. Not my Rockets. Our Rockets. Yes, sir. Let's go, Coach Ime. Alfred Shengu. All them boys there. Yeah, I'm rocking with the Houston Rockets. Um, Grizzlies Jazz. Oh, Grizzlies. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting John Morant to put on a show. Warriors Blazers. Warriors. Easily. I would be shocked if they lost that. And then Suns Clippers. Suns. I think the Suns will crush him. And no one guarding KD. No one guarding Book. The Suns have got that one easily. But uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. To, to see, uh, we I think we had the exact same predictions for every single one of them, except for Magic versus Heat. So I'm going to keep a close eye on that game. So no matter what, you're going to win by tomorrow if you kept today's score. I'm up and, two. Yes. I, I'm up two. So, but we're doing this every day for the whole season. So. <laughs> oh, is this a new thing for you? This is a new thing. This is, We'll okay. see by the end of the season what really happens. So okay. I could okay. be up three or it could be two one. And then we go again. Um, Thursday night, there's there's a couple couple interesting games because on Thursday night is Wemby versus Luca, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, well, when, when you say Wemby, I just naturally get excited. I, uh, I yeah, yeah, that's, that's why I had to say we'll talk about that tomorrow. I, I have to. Have I want to see how minutes. many days or how many shows I can go without saying Wemby. Oh, okay, well, we did today, so that's okay. Yes. We did yes. today, so that's okay. And then tomorrow won't be because we'll do a preview for that game. But um, if you're listening and you enjoy the show, make sure you subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast from. And uh, most importantly, till next time, get buckets. <laughs>